How are you all doing? Good. I'm good to see you all here for this special Sunday. Advent is indeed all a special uh, season for us uh, today. It will be uh, extremely special because we're going to be able to uh, hear the story of uh, Christmas and get kids involved in part of the service as they wish. We do have some announcement though that I'd like to share with you at this time. Uh, first of all, uh, if you are not uh, on our uh, Facebook, please go sell on Facebook and like us. And uh, there you find a little 30 second, 40 second uh, little video about the uh, Advent and Christmas. Please share that with, and so that we can let many more people uh, be, feel invited to come to Salem for Christmas. Uh, so if you have any question how to do that, let me know. Uh, today, later, 4 o'clock, we're going to have a great time here. Uh, we'll have uh, a special Christmas concert. Uh, there will be uh, really a lot of fun. I've been there before. And then uh, there is uh, uh, food uh, afterwards. Uh, we'll have some special uh, appetizers and dessert, of course. 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now, uh, 24th, uh, we all think of the 24th as Christmas Eve, which is, is true. But this year, because it's a Sunday, uh, the 24th in the morning is actually the 4th of Advent. And we'll celebrate the 4th of Advent, last Sunday of Advent, by uh, lesson and carols is the opportunity to hear uh, scripture uh, at, around the Christmas time and sing a lot of different carols that we don't get to sing uh, often. And then at 4 o'clock, we switch to uh, our service, Christmas Eve service, and with a candlelight, a special service uh, uh, with uh, uh, the celebration of the birth of Christ. So two, two uh, different, very different services on uh, uh, the 24th. And lastly, here we go. Last Sunday, we had a home run and we had another one. Way to go, Steve. Congratulations for your home run. Uh, and I keep saying this dark ball this year doing too good for my own good because I promised that I will be cooking a dinner for them and that dinner is coming closer and closer and closer to me as the time goes by. Well done, Steve. We are all proud of you. Let us now enter into a time of worship with the lighting of the candles. After the lighting of the candles, we'll have the congregation join with the choir the music's in the bulletin. of Advent, we pray for God's peace. Christ is our light and the source of our peace. We witness the hostility between nations and neighbors. Christ is our light and the source of our peace. We see a world full of fractured relationships and unforgiving hearts. Christ is our light and the source of our peace. 
We seek relief from our own from our own inner turmoil and restlessness. Christ is our light and the source of our peace. This morning we will light two candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace. This candle reminds us that Christ came into our world to restore peace and that only through trusting in God's word and his promises can we find our own inner peace. We remember that Christ is the Prince of Peace who taught us that through simple acts of love and forgiveness, peace is spread throughout the world. Let us pray. Gracious, gracious God, as we continue our Advent journey, we thank you for sending the Prince of Peace into the world filled with unrest and strife. We ask that you quiet our restless hearts and instill each of us a calm assurance that tells us that you are in control, so we need not to worry. Give us the tools we need to serve as you would have, ser would have served us, and make us willing instruments of your peace. Amen. Everybody stand with me, please. Right? Cool. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. We dream God's dream of a world at peace where enemies are reconciled and children play in safety, where the poor and powerless find justice. We remember God's promise of a prince of peace filled with the spirit of God, of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, of justice and faithfulness. As we enter in this second Sunday of Advent, we pray... Come, Lord Jesus, open our lives to the peace which you bring. Let us turn to you and get ready. Let us join together.
<laughs> Hello, everybody. How's it going? Every, is anybody excited for Christmas? Yeah. You, you are? Yeah. yeah. No, anybody here? You're not excited for Christmas. Yeah. Oh, you are? <laughs> Does anybody know how many days before Christmas? You, 25? Mm. What? 15. So, how close is Christmas? Is that pretty close? 15 days is pretty close, huh? So here is the $100 question for all of you. Not that I will give you $100, just, you know, a way to say things. I have a question for you. How do you get ready for Christmas? Anybody think about how you get, how you get ready for Christmas? Oh. What? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, what's going on? What are you doing? You're getting ready for Christmas? What do you mean? Uh, yeah, but you know what? Probably cleaning. I know that we clean when we get ready for people, but that might not be what we want to do today. How about if you invite them to sit down with you? I'll see. Uh, well, these kids are going to explain to you what it really is about. Yes, you go. Decorate. Look at that. Decorate. What else do you do to get ready for Christmas? What do you do? Put milk out and some cookies out for Santa. That is crucial. Did you all hear that? Very good. Can we have them? There are actually another microphone. Yeah, they're pretty loud. Here, let's hear. What do you do for get ready for Christmas? You, you hang out, you put out some cookies and some milk for Santa. Yeah, that is very important. Anybody has any other idea? What do you do? Put your stockings out. Oh, that is, now that there is just a, yeah, it's go all toward the one person that is called Saint. Anybody else has an idea? Anybody do anything else to uh, get ready for Christmas? What do you do to get ready for Christmas? Uh, put decorations up. Decorations up. Any other ideas? Any other ideas? No? So, that is true. We do that. That is sort of fun, but... Oh, my God. Today, we're having a lot of interruption. Uh, what is going on now? You got the tree. I see that. Uh, what are you doing, Franklin? What are you doing? Wrapping the present. Wrapping the present. Did you never see what happened here during this time? We kind of listened to the past to say all the great things. Oh, that's it. Are you bad? You're bad? Uh, well, you're getting ready. They are getting ready for Christmas, but maybe there is another way. Can we turn that down? Thank you. All right. So, yes, we do wrap papers and do the tree from a tree, but there is something else. Any other su suggestion how you can get ready for Christmas? Maybe with your heart. Can you get your heart ready for Christmas? What do you do? Oops, everybody. Mm. Anybody? You have another well, mic. Well, one thing, well, oh, yeah, you have another mic. One thing that you could do to get your heart ready for Christmas is um, pray to God and just allow him to do the work for you. So yeah. praying is a good idea. Yeah, praying. Yeah, how about that? Anybody else? Do you have any other idea, suggestion about how we can get ready? Yeah, Maddie, let's hear. Um, be generous, donate, help out people. Be generous. Did you think about that? No, but you know what? You win a couple points because you're so honest. Can I give you some couple points? You want to also win a couple points here. Let me give it the microphone to you. What, what, do, you, what do you want like, to do to get ready? Put the ornaments on the chair. Yeah, that too. Okay, so we have one-way street here. So, but also, anybody thought about that preparing for Christmas? It could be giving a gift to somebody that you like. Yeah? Oh, help your mom, help your dad, help with the, your sibling, your brother and sister. Also, the best way that I know is listening to the Christmas story. The story that tells us about the birth of Jesus, that he was born, because that really is the reason why we 
celebrate Christmas. So in a little bit, just a few minutes, we're gonna actually go through that and learn a little bit about the Christmas story. And that is, so listen very carefully. Some of you are gonna be part of that, but listen very carefully because that is the best way to get ready for Christmas. Okay? Yes. okay you guess? Well, I'll take that. Okay, hold hands. Let's hold hands. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much to help us to prepare for this time of the year. We ask you to be with each and every one so that we can get ready in our heart. Open our heart, become more loving and more generous to each other and to also other people that we might not know. We ask you all of this in your name. Amen. 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 Thanks so much for coming over. Uh, we are uh, moving a special time of offering, and uh, we have the opportunity to share uh, some of the gifts that we receive uh, uh, from uh, uh, God all the time. We're doing this early in the service because after this uh, we'll open uh, the Christmas story time, and we don't want to interrupt that with something else. So this is a special time for us, and all those who are looking at uh, us uh, from home, you're also invited to give uh, using our website. So let us now enter in a time of offering. Father, to you we dedicate these gifts and we ask you to take them in your hands and multiply so that they can reach so many who are uh, struggling these days and they can become uh, a source of love and hope and peace for others. We ask you to bless this gift. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Settings, two kids meet each other outside of a church. Neither is paying attention to where they are going. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, hi, what's new to you? I wasn't paying attention either, sorry, not much. 
new with me? How about you? I'm on my way to the church Christmas program. Hey, do you want to come along? The church is right around the corner. It will be great. Come on, you will like it. It is always a great program. I don't know. It kind of sounds like a boy. I have heard of the Christmas story before. Mary, Joseph, and the baby shepherds, angels, wise men. It's kind of of like watching a rerun on TV. Besides, what does any of this have to do with today? All that stuff happened over 2,000 years ago. Things change, you know? You might be surprised. In the Bible, there is a verse that says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. I think you might just learn a thing or two from the old story. Let us join together and sing Victory in Jesus. from the church. Let's go to the program and when it is over, we'll go for milkshakes. All right, but if it is boring like a TV rerun, you are buying the milkshakes. Let us join together and sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census would be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Those angels were praising God. People still praise the Lord today.
he goes, they did make a joyful noise. I guess that is praising the Lord. Okay, that part is the same. You bet it is. We do it all the time around here. Here, here she goes, another angel. Luke 2, 15 through 16 says, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Tell me what the shepherds have to do with the current year. I know there are people who still raise sheep, but they don't dress like that or run around the with those bed sticks. True, we don't have shepherds like that today, but hearing sheep was a very popular job back then. Today we have other jobs we do. Here comes the motor. They have jobs just like the shepherds, has sheep, but the sheep or those jobs don't have to be the most important things in their lives. Jesus just wants to be number one. You mean that even though they all have to work to do, Jesus still comes first for them? You mean that I God gave them a job to do? They'd leave their tractors and desks to serve him, just like the shepherds left their sheep? That's right, still the same. I think I'm getting the picture now. I'll listen to another angel speaking. Matthew 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod Magi, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is one, of, one, who, one who has been born king of the Jews? Who saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him? When King Herod heard that he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him, when he called together all the people, chief priests, teachers of the law, he replied to them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this, was what, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For uh, you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may too go and worship him. After they heard from the king, they went to the, on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let us join together in singing, We Three Kings. still bring gifts from Jesus, like our gifts we brought today and that will be blessed and sent to Christmas Clearing Council. Thank you for bringing me 
for bringing me here today. I have learned even though the first Christmas was over 2,000 years ago, Jesus is still alive today, the same as yesterday and forever. Let us sing joy to the world while we go help the others present our gifts. so that they can go out in our county and make uh, many kids uh, happy, make Christmas for them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we receive uh, these gifts and we bless them in your name. And we ask you to uh, walk with them until they reach the hands of little ones, allowing them to uh, make this Christmas uh, more happy and getting to know you and generosity and love that way. We ask you to be with all these kids, put generosity and love in their own hearts so that we will all grow closer to you. In your name we pray, amen. Please stand as you're able to sing, go tell it on the mountain. We can just stay here.
are uh, welcome Santa in the library. So everybody that wants to take a picture, Santa will have a little gift for you. And pictures. That's right, Santa? That's right. All right, so hold hands. Let's hold hands and let's close together. Find two hands somewhere. Hey, Reagan, do you want to give me a hand? There. Are you all connected? As we prepare to leave this time of uh, worship and service, this time of hope and generosity, may the Lord be with you. And may each of us be carrying that love like these gifts are going to go out in the world. So we are called to do the same. Let's go out into the world and bring hope and peace to all that meet us in his name. Amen. Thanks so much, kids. And thank you, Mary Jo.